No rain or snow to start the year, but more active weather on the way towards the end of the week. Happy New Year. While many of you are committing to a resolution, a Post Falls couple is committing to one another after receiving heartbreaking news. It is my sincere pleasure to introduce you to the happy couple, Mr. and Mrs. Thomas and Rebecca Walker. A sinkhole opens up in Spokane on the Lower South Hill. We'll have the latest on when roads could open. 2019 is off to a mild start on the weather front, but, some, but get ready for some changes across the region. Happy New Year, everyone. My name's Alexa Block. Mark and Jane are off tonight. We're expecting another round of rain and snow in the coming days. Michelle Boss is in the Weather Center with details. Michelle? We do have some active weather as we head towards the end of the week, but for now, things are nice and quiet and relaxing, kind of a, a way to ease yourself into the new year. No snow to shovel on your driveway, no gusty winds to have to contend with, and some blue skies in parts of the inland northwest taking a look out at Leavenworth just as the sun is setting and lots of blue skies out there. We've seen pretty gray skies here in the Spokane area today, but kind of a still a festive holiday feel out in Leavenworth. Satellite and radar picture showing the break in the clouds just to the east of the Cascades. It's still pretty gloomy across most of eastern Washington and north Idaho, though we have seen a few uh, breaks in the clouds even here and a pretty sunset in the Spokane area. No rain or snow to deal with. Temperatures definitely on the chilly side today, 29 right now in Spokane in the mid 20s in St. Mary's and still hanging on to 30 degrees in Wenatchee and Moses Lake temperatures in the 40s on the west side. Elsewhere across the region checking in and a few other cities, 25 in Deer Park, 30 in Spokane Valley and looking at 31 degrees in Pomeroy, 24 degrees in Winchester. The day planner forecast for this evening, mostly cloudy skies, temperatures in the 20s be down to 22 overnight with mostly cloudy skies and you won't have to worry about any inclement weather tomorrow. Uh, that rain and snow and wintry mix coming in on Thursday, but for tomorrow, mostly cloudy and highs in the low 30s. Alrighty, thanks, Michelle. A traffic alert for you if you're driving tonight on the South Hill. This sinkhole started opening up near Sacred Heart. It's near Grand and Rockwood Boulevard. The northbound lanes are currently shut down. Crews say there was a water leak caused, which caused the road to collapse. Officials have to figure out how much damage it did so they can figure out how to repair it moving forward. We have to have a wall as part of border security, and we're working on it. It's day 11 of the partial federal government shutdown. President Donald Trump says it will stay that way until he gets money for the border wall. House Democrats unveiled two bills this week, but neither includes the $5 million the president wants to build the wall. Meanwhile, the largest federal union representing government employees is suing the government. Hundreds of thousands of federal workers are currently working without pay. They won't get their paychecks until the shutdown ends. The American Federation of Government Employees is suing, saying it's illegal for some employees to work with no pay. National Park workers say the government shutdown is creating a nightmare scenario for the parks. The parks are still open, but they're operating without rangers and other staff members. The, at Yosemite, Yellowstone, Rocky Mountain National Parks and others, people say the campgrounds are overwhelmed with trash and even human waste. No word yet as to if the partial shutdown could end or when it will end. Now, just hours before the start of the new year, President Trump signed a new law creating a national alert system for missing or endangered adults. The Ashanti alert will be used for people who are too old for an amber alert and too young for a silver alert. It's named after 19 year old Ashanti Billy, who was abducted in Virginia in 2017 and found dead a few days later. Police did not send out an emergency alert because of her age. The Ashanti alert will work like other national systems and send out messages to your phone about missing or endangered adults in your region. Facebook memorializes a Portland man's account. This is something the social media site does often when people die, but there's one catch. This man is not dead. Now he's locked out out of his account. Kristen Severance with our Portland station looked into this bizarre mix up. It says remembering Mike Ostrander to remember and celebrate his life. The only problem, Mike Ostrander is alive. I got angry to start with, and then I got started worrying about how family members might react to this if they seen it. Ostrander realized his account had been memorialized when he tried to log in last week. It wouldn't let me log in. Supposedly a family member or friend had requested that the account be memorialized. He worried what his friends across the country or sister in Canada might yeah. think. Until she could reach somebody that's what she would think. She would think I was dead. 
you know, and any other family or friend member friend would have been the same way. Facebook will memorialize an account after someone dies to keep the account going. According to their rules, a request needs to be sent naming the deceased person and providing their date of passing and proof of death, such as a death certificate. It's kind of crazy that they would do this without verifying anything or at least sending an email to the account holder. Ostrander contacted Facebook and sent them a picture of his ID. He's still waiting for them to fix it. They want pictures of my photo ID. Um, or passport proving that I'm alive. In the meantime, he's locked out of his account, so he created a new one and has been messaging his friends about the problem. They just think it's stupid that Facebook would do something like this. Our sister station reached out to Facebook. A spokesperson for the company says they're looking into the matter and the, they reinstated the account. Whatever rough patch you're going through in life, you just reflect on those moments and realize that Taylor has it twice as hard as all of us, and it's not as bad as you think. A nine-year-old Washington girl's diagnosis is so rare, experienced doctors haven't even seen a case like it. Taylor Futch is from Puyallup. Over the past few years, she's been losing her ability to talk and move, and after a wrong diagnosis of cerebral palsy, she was later diagnosed with ALS, the condition that usually only affects middle-aged men. But the way she's handling her disease is what is inspiring her family and her doctors. We have her story coming up at 6 o'clock. My bridesmaids and friends and family have really been like, what do you need? Like, and I'm just like, I honestly don't care. don't want to make decisions. Y'all plan a wedding you think I'll like, and I'm not going to complain. A Post Falls couple rang in the new year by saying their I do's. They had less than a week to plan the wedding after learning the bride's father may not make it until their planned September ceremony. The community, friends, and family came together to make it happen. Creme 2's Amanda Rowley has the story. What better way to start the new year than by saying I do to the one you love the most? Think of a better way to start the first day of the new year than with the blessing of a marriage surrounded by those you love. He always like livens me up, keeps me upbeat and happy and not like super uptight and I couldn't ask for a better best friend. Rebecca Alexander and Thomas Walker read their vows during a small ceremony before their closest family and friends. You know what to say or do to calm me down, to cheer me up. The wedding couldn't have gone any smoother. The dress was perfect and the decorations romantic. It's like you couldn't even tell they had less than a week to plan. Mr. and Mrs. Thomas and Rebecca Walker. <laughs> go from like, oh, we're getting married in nine months to, oh, we have one week. The Post Falls couple originally planned to tie the knot this fall, but just days before Christmas, Rebecca learned terrible news about her dad. He has a glioblastoma that's a butterfly tumor in his brain, and it's inoperable and untreatable as far as we know. First few days were really rough. It was almost kind of like mourning the diagnosis, but you know, for me, I'm just like, you know, nothing's happened. Like, treat it, treat it and him as you would it have any other day. Unsure of the time they have left, Rebecca knew she wanted the memory of her dad walking her down the aisle. So they decided to have the wedding on New Year's Day. Well, when you get some unfortunate news, you gotta roll with the punches. The Post Falls community has grown to know and love the Alexander family over the years. So when it came to making this day possible, there was no hesitation. You're just so overwhelmed with uh, everyone's thoughtfulness and love. It's honestly kind of been a blessing that we've been able to do this, you know, have that memory and um, him be able to do that. So I love you and Thanks for all you've done, and I'm so excited I get to walk with you. Now, the couple still plans to have their originally planned ceremony in September. Tonight, though, they're thanking the Post Falls community for helping them put together the wedding so quickly.